It is just universal, whether you're a Christian or a Muslim, sometimes you hear certain lyrics and it just sings. It doesn't matter if, you know, you go to church or you go to mosque. Certain things will just resonate and it, it will just tick there. And we were just talking about that before we came into the studio and somebody said, Hello, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, what we'll be talking about music this morning, the business of making music and of course, um, we, we should have had him last week, but you know Lagos traffic and humble you. And this morning he had to also drop his car to make it to the studio this morning. Thank you so much for the sacrifice. Okay, join us as a welcome, Kent and Don Jobi. Thank you for being thank here on the Good program. Morning. This Finally. Morning. <laughs> <laughs> and I know a lot of people will say, is that really his name? Is Kent and Don Jobi really his name? So you are here. You, you, so that will be where we will start the, this conversation from this morning. Okay, well, I go by the name Kendi Asan. That's my real name. Okay. Uh, you're a twin. I'm a twin, yeah, I'm a twin. <laughs> you're a twin. Oh. She's a twin mama. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so that means I'll have to be like before I leave you. Oh, no. <laughs> I, I, would, I would have to leave. <laughs> well, I, I don't think I'm safe in between the two of you. <laughs> so anyway, my name is Kendi Asan. So, but um, my stage name is Kent Edunjabi. Mm. So the Kent came from... When I was, it was initially Kent Oxygen. Uh -huh. That was when I was in the second, when I was in the secondary school year, and um, I was a science student. We were thought the first twenty elements in chemistry. chemistry. Uh, so my friends and I, because you know that <laughs> the zoo was the, there. The zoo was there. So we decided to name ourselves after our favorite first elements. twenty elements, yes. and mine was mine was oxygen. Uh -oh. So I shortened my name Kendi to Ken, then plus. Oxygen. oxygen so the plus, the plus became oh. so it now became Kent <laughs> Kent. oxygen then in the course of um rebranding after obviously after a very long um number of years so i decided to add to adopt the kent and then take Change. edun jobi okay, as my oric from my oric uh, as a twin. Mm. So, yeah. okay <laughs> Why are you relishing? You can't burn <laughs> twins again. But no, you, you, I like to sing <laughs> the twins. When, when she brings the twins, I wash them like Orisha, like Edu Jobi. <laughs> so that's why I'm just smiling. Good to see you when we see the you know camaraderie with the uh, twins. I don't know where that came from. Anyway, I'm still not safe. But hey, that was uh, the music uh, we just got now. And yeah. I know behind the scenes we're talking about it. I feel mean, I was asking a lot of questions yeah. around you know the beginning the, beginning the roots of, of the mm -hmm. songs and i was saying okay imao god isn't mm -hmm. uh from that particular church and you now have to explain explain that to our viewers that song started i mean it would take for me it was it's tiktok where i get to know when new songs are out mm. so that was where i heard the song first i was like oh nice uh, this is uh okay but okay Okay, so I kept on okay, <laughs> okay, until uh, you know I heard a lot more people singing it, and mm. it looked like it resonated with each and every one. one yeah, Everyone exactly. seemed to just have something about that song. As Abimbala said, either you're a Muslim, you're a Christian, Christian yeah. the song just resonates with you. So tell us the background of the song, and of course we'll get into the, the mm. money making money side. Making. So, <laughs> so basically, the, the song was. Uh, so it's just like every other song that, that I've written. Um, so that song was written, written last year and performed last year. So sometimes, uh, yeah, I think um, November, yeah, November last year, we, my church, we usually have our annual Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving. around um, that period, third um, week November. of November. So it was, and of course, by tradition, the choir will always write new <coughs> songs, okay. you know, just to to present that day as our special number. So it was time to write a new song as well. And funny enough, nothing was coming to me. Like I wasn't just inspired. So my people were asking me, what are we going to perform? What are we going to perform? I said, I don't know. Then one day I just prayed and said, oh God, I just need maybe four lines. Let's just have four lines of new <laughs> song. And we just merged it with one of our old, old songs, songs that of course people love to love hear. To, to mm. hear. And that was how I got, I had Ebenezer in my head. And days later, I mean, I was just checking social media and um, I saw a music from Toluchi and um, it ignited something in me. And I went to my studio and I started writing the song. And we performed the song that day, um, that day I mean, the, uh, the Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. But I was just very particular about um, the quality of 
everything for no reason i was just being particular about the quality of the sound the live sound the quality of the video that we're going to do i just wanted everything to be top notch not that i had any hidden agenda or mm. anything i was projecting so after perform performing the song november that's that that year we got the video i mixed the audio i took it to my studio and mixed and everything was ready by december <clears throat> and i just left everything in my hard drive Maybe once in a while, I'll just go there and click and play and watch and just smile. So, I mean, this year we were about working on the choir album and we're listing the songs. And we, I listed the Benizarians. For some reasons, some of the team members said we should remove the song oh, wow. from, from the, album. the album. And I said, okay, fine, let's remove it. I didn't want it to look like, oh, you were pushing I was for pushing it. for it. So I just removed it. And I said, oh, then I remember that oh, there's a video... I mean, the performance video we did last year, and this was around March this year. Wow. Okay. Yes. So I said, oh, there's a video we did, uh, you know, the, the performance video from last year. I think we should just post it on YouTube and probably have maybe 200 or 300 views. At least that's... That's not let's, something. That should let's, just, something. Uh, let's just put something there, at least so that the video will not go to waste. Because mm. by, by June, we're already planning for another harvest right. and everybody's attention is going to be towards that. And if that harvest comes, that video becomes... It's gone. Okay. It's gone. Mm. Yeah. So I just went to my um, studio and I posted the video on YouTube and that was it. No monetization, no push, nothing. I just left it there. And all of a sudden, like you said on TikTok, I woke up one morning and I just started hearing buzz from people, <laughs> release this, release the audio. At first it was release the audio of this song, release the audio, audio of this song now. I thought it was a joke. I thought it was a joke. Then I checked my phone whatsapp my whatsapp um, status everybody was using the Aww. video and i was, i kept on wondering I, just like you were saying okay okay so <laughs> in my head so i was saying okay maybe tomorrow everybody will calm down and we'll just move on to greater things <laughs> but it just kept happening crazy cra happening happening like that and before you know it celebrities were jumping on the song mm. and the song became a household, a household <laughs> song. something that yeah. uh, uh, please go ahead so so i mean that's how the song came in and um of course like you said the song resonated with everybody mm -hmm. where i got scared was muslims <laughs> claiming the song that <laughs> at some point they, they, had, they even had to tell us to our face that like, hey we know that this song is from select church but this song is no more your song it's our this song. is our song then that was when i knew that okay we can't lay claims to this song anymore <laughs> so I, in my head i started thinking okay what can i do what can i do I, okay you know ima is my friend mm. so i spoke to him i spoke to my team and said okay you know let's just do a three four minute song on this uh, a cover of this song okay. and um that was how we we called him and Ima got to this got into the song and then we also wanted to pass a message across to say that you know whether you're a muslim or, doesn't a, christian. Matter. or you're a christian it doesn't, doesn't matter. matter this song is actually preaching about the heart of thanksgiving mm. everybody as long as you are alive you you should learn the culture of thanksgiving right. and i think because of the hustle and bustle of life a lot of us we tend to forget the good things that god has done has for done. us mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. we always want to ask for more, right. for more. so at this song reminds us yes. that to stay in that to, yes. gratitude like at really some point you. you need to you need to calm down and say thank you for, for, for what you've for done, what you've done. Mm. Mm. okay uh, I mean, perfectly put. You, I mean, you've just given us a background as to, you know, how the song. But let's come to the side of you as a composer because yeah. you never thought that this song will create that buzz. Like, and, and it's still creating anyway yeah. because a lot of people are still just getting in onto it. I, I know that, um, you know, when I tried to reach out to you, I said, hey, I hope I can just get to this guy. I hope he's just <laughs> going to come to his DM because it's pretty difficult to always get it's people. It's actually difficult to it's, get people to difficult. read. It's and difficult. so, boom! When you responded, I said, "Okay, oh, oh, I just yeah. hit the jackpot." <laughs> <laughs> and it's not exciting for me. So, when it comes to composing music, sometimes you can have it rough. Sometimes you can have it easy. Um, here you are when you wanted to get inspiration. Nothing was coming, but at some point in time, something just came, and you were able to build on it. So. How much of a work is it to compose music? It's not easy, to be honest. It's always not easy because what you're doing is you're creating something out of nothing. Mm -hmm. So at times you could have it easy, like you could have something you want to talk about and boom, 
every line, every lyrics, everything you want to talk about. I mean, the way you want to structure your your tenses, your your your. I mean, your expression. Everything comes. I mean, the, I wrote a song under thirty minutes, and and I've taken like three, four months to write a song before. So it's at times it's. It, I think it's just um, the thing of the mind mm -hmm. and the way we get inspired. Mm -hmm. And like I always say, it depends on how God wants you to right. to write. There's always a God factor. Yeah, yeah, honestly, I tell <laughs> there you, there's is always, always a God, a God factor. factor. Yeah. Mm. Okay, uh, okay, go uh, ahead. For for lots of musicians, mm -hmm. collaboration is key, yeah. and you had to quickly, you know, masterfully think outside the box to say, look, okay, I want to make this song as universal as possible, as, possible, yes. as you know, uh, accessible as possible, so people do not have any reason not to want to listen mm -hmm. and also have a feel of what it is. So you find a lot of our artists collaborating amongst themselves, mm -hmm. locally and also internationally. internationally how, yes. how much of um, a pressure is that Ima, oh, Ima, oh, 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 oh my God, is your friend? Mm -hmm. So probably it will be easy for you to pick up the phone mm -hmm. to say, "Hey, I want to call." I recall uh, when what's this guy's name now, who sang uh, I like the shake Ed Sheeran. Okay. I wanted to do a duet with okay. Beyonce. I said he, was, he had been sending her mails for mm -hmm. like a whole year okay. until she finally uh, mm -hmm. responded, uh, or her, her people responded to him, and he was also excited as a people like, <laughs> was excited. So how much of a pressure is that when you know you have a work and you want this work to just outgrow, outlive you? And mm. so that it's not just yours, yeah. but everyone can own it and lay claims to it. So, so one thing about collaboration is, as such <coughs> as it is, it could it could also be the other way around. Mm. So you need to you need to know the right person to to collaborate with. Then the funnest thing now is that if you've chosen someone to say, oh, I think this person is the right person for me to collaborate with, that person too is being careful to say, oh. Am I sure this is the person I want to collaborate value, with? To so, see, will my value ex drop or exactly will it add? Increase. And of course, are we, I mean, at the same, at the same you, you get what I'm saying? So for, for Ima, oh my God, I think it's because um, we both share, I mean, I think we're, um, I'm lucky uh, for the fact that uh, we both share the same ideology about the song. So imagine me reaching out to someone else who thinks, oh, I don't want to be associated with, mm -hmm. with um, gospel or I don't want to be associated with this or uh, I'm not sure I want to do this. I mean, I'm not going to blame them. At, at the end of the day, it's their career. It's their projection. They know how, um, they know the kind of pace they, they want it to take and everything. I mean, I also have some people who want to collaborate with me and I'm still thinking, okay, is do it I the right to decision mm. to take, you know, so... It's it's a two way thing. Right. At the end of the day, both parties must. Um, so yeah, you're looking, you're looking at your brand, yeah, you're looking, looking at, at their brand, brand yes. to see I mean, how. It, at times, mm. it even goes beyond, beyond the beyond the the, um, the song, the music itself. The music will be good, and you really want to do the music. But then you're looking at the person's brand. Okay, this person has appeared in, in places like this. Oh, this person is signed to this particular brand, mm. and I'm not um, cool with the brand. Or oh, my own brand is not cool. We with do not it. share the same. Exactly. So it, it takes a whole lot. It takes mm. a whole lot. So your team and the other party, they must agree. Then you, as a musician, to the mu music wise. So every every box is must be ticked. Mm. Right. I know that, um, of course, you, you are um, a member of um, the Celestial Church. Yeah. You are a member of Apex Choir. Yeah. And I think that's where everybody, practically most people, got to know about you. But, of course, you do music. Yeah. And you are a fantastic soundtrack <laughs> composer. <laughs> um, not many people would also know that you worked on the... Um, Anikulaku. Anikulaku. Yeah. Um, you got an award um, also yeah. on that. Mm. So how did you find your way into soundtrack um, composition? Um, was it a recommendation? Did you do something for someone and then, you know, this opens the way for you? Did you walk into that aspect or how did you find that, that, that way? Oh, well, I think, I think it's just destiny because I, I never... 
that wasn't the that wasn't the plan. Mm, okay. So, but I, like um, like they will say Ori mm -hmm. is Ori Ibitori Magbinyode. So it was never the plan. Right. So I did um, I recorded a couple of songs years back that I was pushing, I was pushing, I was pushing, and um, and then I I met Lolo of Wazobia FM. And then she started helping me to push. And one day, Mr. Kunle walked into the studio trying to push his movie, and he heard my song. Okay. And he told Lolo, oh, I would like to meet <coughs> this guy. And, you know, we tried connecting at some point, but, um, I mean, I guess it wasn't just time. Mm. Then much later, I think 2016, we, we, we reconnected again, myself and Mr. Kunle Afalayo, and... Um, he was always talking about how I need to live the nine to five world <laughs> and how I need to do music. <laughs> you know, music is the only thing you need to do. And That's I'm not like, fair. See how you're doing it in his voice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And he said, <laughs> So I remember I remember when he released um, CEO mm -hmm. and at the premiere of CEO I performed and after that performance, I think around one AM and I told him I said I'm going home. I need to prepare for work tomorrow. He shows you. Know, she, you need to leave that. In fact, go and resign tomorrow. And I'm like, guy, I need to pay bills. I know. But eventually, I, I took the bold step. And after taking the bold step, it was more like, okay, what are you going to do? Mm -hmm. Like, I had all the time to myself. Okay, I was still pushing some of the songs. And then he was, I mean, obviously, he, he makes movies all the time. So... And we're working together. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, you know what, let's, let's begin to do music to, to his films. And, soundtracks. Um, soundtracks. So that was how you started. I started. So it was, at first, it was going to be a one of the... In fact, the first movie I did for him, he, he, he first said the movie was going to be less music-driven, no music. So it's going to be just there. But eventually, we end up doing just the song, and it, it went viral. That was Roti, that was the first yeah. one. And yeah. before, and after then, rather... We started doing making music, and from him, I started making for other mm. uh, movie producers too, like Asof. I worked on um, Femi Adebayo's movie, mm. worked on um, Kemi Adetiba's um, King of Voice Part Two with okay. Niola. You know, did a lot of stuff, and that was how it became. Okay, I think this thing is a big, it's it's a big, big business. Big business. Okay, yeah. so let's talk about <laughs> let's talk about the business. I love I love to talk about business. He loves so, about <laughs> money. Let's <laughs> break it down. So, uh, as your eyes will say, when you can you me. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what must what must an artist do? I mean, for you, you had to leave your nine to five job. Mm -hmm. You thought it was a one night one uh, one off thing, mm -hmm. and you now found someone who believes so much in you and said, "Look, there's more money here than there." So, what must an artist constantly do to keep the wheel of the business going? So at least they can look like you. <laughs> the first thing is the first thing you have to stay true with God. Mm. The God um, factor. The God factor. So oftentimes we we tend to put the God factor as the last thing mm. but really it should be the first because you you really nobody knows tomorrow we, we can all, we can always sit here and project and say oh, if i do this um, this is going to be the result but there's someone somewhere who is saying no mm. or they or who is going to say yes so you need to align with that person first mm. i mean i just talked about um how Ebenezeri came about up till now we still have not spent a dime on the promotion for Ebenezer. Wow. wow. Yeah. And it's everywhere. But I can tell you that I have other songs that, in fact, I have a song that was supposed to go out. In <coughs> fact, I, I was already planning a concert for an EP mm. that I was going to drop. But because of my choir engagement, oh, the choir album, I was one handling, so I had to pend everything. So say, okay, after this, let's, let's start. So the God factor is, is key. Yeah. Then after that, you need to you need to get exposed. You need to read a lot. You need to read a lot. You need your lawyer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You need your you. So oftentimes we we tend to. So do, it's a business business. It's it's a business. So it's a serious because business. we are artists, because we are creative, so we get so so carried away with the creative side of things. You know, I want to write music. Oh, I want to play this chord. Oh, I want to do this. I want to do that. But hey, Naira and Kobo, money must be made. Mm -hmm. And the truth of the matter is, it's always it's very hard for you to see a, a creative, a creative who is also uh, business, business conscious. Minded. I don't want to say mm. money conscious, mm. but business, business minded. Mm. It's very hard because <coughs> we creative we we tend to stay in that side of creative. So, I mean, it's not a bad thing. Right. But if once you know that, okay, you can't you can't marry both together. Get yourself a team that can help you 
you know, coordinate, balance, coordinate that, things. So, that as you, so, so that as you're creating the music, your, your, your money is yes, also creating yes. and growing. Exactly. Mm. So, I mean, it's it's not just about you create content and you leave it there. You have to monetize it to pay mm -hmm. bills. Mm -hmm. Hmm. So Monetize as you're creating, pay bills. as you're creating, you pass it on to the next team. They begin to think of how to plug it in places where it can generate. At times, they will they will even be the ones to tell you, you know what? I think there's an opportunity there. Mm -hmm. Create something that was that is going to fit into that spot. Okay. Then we monetize. Mm. Mm. Right. So how, how lucrative is making music? Because sometimes a lot of people say, oh, and is that? And then you're wondering. So if there's no money, what are you doing there? So um, how lucrative? <laughs> like ah. it is it is lucrative <laughs> i mean i had to stop my nine to five to do music mm -hmm. though at, at that point it felt crazy mm -hmm. it seemed crazy I, I had some friends who said are you sure what you're doing i just got married are you sure you i i mean are you in your right senses but but like i said you you have to be exposed you have to get yourself the right team mm -hmm. and um read a lot so i i did a lot of reading you look, you look like a geek though <laughs> like <laughs> like a geek you look like you're a nerd uh. <laughs> <laughs> look like you're just always and <laughs> so that's why i say read a lot so so you need, so to, you, you need, to, you need to read a lot about the business so for me as much as i try to read i try to learn from people i'm i'm more of an interactive person. person so i like to i like to to maybe probably not sit with the person but i will study you mm. so i have i have a lot of people i'm studying Okay, this person is doing this. Okay, how is this person? So, and the fact that I was also very close to uh, Mr. Kunle Afalani, so I thought <coughs> he was balancing the creative side and the business side. So, he made me realize that, hey, don't pay too much attention to the creative side alone. Mm -hmm. You have to create the balance. Mm. So, I was build oh. an empire, yeah. almost mm. like it. Let's talk about promotions because you, you, you wanted to do one, but because even uh, Ebenezer isn't what you, you, you've not even promoted it, you've not, you've not spent Everything it down, you just organic. put it on YouTube, and everyone's <laughs> taking it, uh, it's taking a life of its own, I, I, as far as that honestly, song is concerned. Honestly. I think, I think God's taking it away and flown with it, so it's no longer in your hand. No, 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 no. No. But there is an artist I respect so much in, in, in Nigeria, David O, mm. and I do. I like tell when I have opportunity to talk to people, I say, Look. What, what, whatever your background, really doesn't matter. I, I see him as someone, even if he was from the poorest of the slums, he will still have the work ethics that he has. Mm -hmm. Dropping an album and jumping all over the place, promoting the album. He sang, I think, at the CNN thing in uh, mm -hmm. the other day. And I was telling my son, I said, see, it is not the money that you think you have that will make it. How much money do you think this guy has in his lineage, but see what he's still doing, jumping all over the stage? You must promote your music. You're not, you're not just going to write it and keep it somewhere. And keep it, exactly. But that's also a lot of work. Uh, what if people don't accept it? What if people look at it and say, ah, mm -hmm. ah, but you must keep promoting it. Uh, how much work goes into that and how much frustration mm. can also come from that? So in terms of promotion, you, you need tolerance. <coughs> you need to, you need what to are you tolerating? So what you're tolerating is this. You can, you can spend, you can make a content and spend so much money and it's not yielding the kind of results you want it to, mm. to yield. So if you're not careful, you can lose interest and, and want to quit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing about the video that I've, I've studied. He mm. puts a song out. The song is doing well. Oh, it's good. But at times he puts the song out, the song is not doing well. He's creating on uh, already another, another, another one, one. Mm. and he's putting even more energy into it. So, so it's it's that's why I said it's 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 not like you're doing you're just doing music. It's business. So when you when you're doing business, of course you have products, variety of products, mm. and you put them out, <coughs> and you see that one is doing well. Oh, this one is not doing well. You don't just close shop because one one product is not doing mm -hmm. well. You have to reinvent. I mean, we have some automobile companies who will do a um, series of um, cars and in, out of the series, they will say, ah, this one is not doing well. They will go They'll back record. and re, re, mm -hmm. rebrand it. They won't <coughs> close shop because of them. Mm, not at all. So it takes a lot of resilience, tolerance. So for you to, for you to do this music business, you have to be resilient. I mean, your level of tolerance and resilience has, has to be, be high. high. Hmm, has okay. to be high. Hmm. So you get to some places, you get to some doors, you knock those doors and they will look at you and they shut the door on you. Hmm. Hmm. You get so a lot of news. Yes, you, you get, get a lot of news. At times you even get a lot of, you, at times you get some years, they open the door and 
they slam a hammer on you and they push you out. Okay. Mm. So you have to go back again. And so until, I mean, until you... So for me, I've been doing this music business, this music thing since, I mean, professionally since 2010. Okay. Oh. Mm. That's, oh, that's years. 20... Yeah. Yes. Mm. So I got my first major award with AMA two years ago. 11 years after, I mean... And a lot of people who <coughs> even started before you haven't gotten an oh, award. Oh, no, most definitely. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but I, a lot of people who started even yeah. years after I'd, I'd started, I mean, they've, they've gone. So how they've does gone. that keep you grounded, Dave? That, so there are some people who have been working and working and haven't even blown, as we say Ooh. here. And here you are, 13 years into it, and... 11, it's, just it's, uh, it's two that, years ago, you already God, have an award. Yeah, it's, it's still thing. the God. <laughs> I don't think it's still the God thing. Yeah, because, because I mean, the, I'm telling my story mm -hmm. now because there are times I look at people and I say, oh, wow, Jesus, I'm just here. And this person started right, Way in, my, before. right in my face and mm -hmm. this person is already out there. But you just have to look on, you just have to have that faith. And having faith in who? In God. That, right. okay, this thing is definitely going to work out someday. Sometimes, Sometime. of course, at times it, it could be very hard. At I, times you I, won't like give to, up. I, I like to ask you this question, I, and because it, it is happening, well, I stumbled uh, on this particular issue I want to raise about two or three days ago, where a particular gospel music was calling out another gospel music for mm -hmm. using her song without mm -hmm. credit. Mm. And so, why is that an issue um, when it comes to music? And then, does, does um, one person have? I mean, earlier when you were talking about um, Ebenezer, Ebenezer, you talked about the fact that you got Ebenezer, but then you decided to do Ebenezer, and somebody can say, oh, no, I've done something like that, and they didn't give me credit for it. So what is it about, um, especially when it comes to gospel songs where almost all words, you know, can be gotten from the Bible, and they could sound same. So what was this issue around so, giving uh, so credit? I think, I think it's just um, one thing I see is, from the gospel side of things, we we still need to learn a lot. We still need to learn a lot. I mean, I learned when I started. I didn't I didn't see myself, and, and I'm still not seeing myself or boxing myself as oh, I'm a gospel artist. I am. You do I, music. I, I do music, so mm. I I want to know everything about music. So one thing I see is the gospel. We the gospel the, the gospel side of things. We we tend to say things as oh, I'm doing it for God. It's for God alone, and we. We just relax. Then when things happens, we now we now begin to, to you know, to wail or to complain. I saw the video too, and what I said was, this person doesn't even need to complain. At first, when you do your when after creating your content, did you copyright it? Mm -hmm. You have a lawyer who who is helping you to do so. Do you have a publisher? You know things like that. So if you have if you already have those things, those the business side of things sorted out. If anybody uses your content, you should even be happy because you're going to sue the person. And you're going to get money. <laughs> and you're going to get money. <laughs> right. I, I'm not sure a lot of people really understand that. So. Yes. So, so I, I mean, I, I, told, I told one of my friends, I said, if anybody uses my music now, I'm just going to go to, 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 to church and do Thanksgiving. <laughs> because you just Sunday, cast out. On Sunday, because the following Monday like this, the lawsuit that is going to slam. But must it must it always be legal? Because I remember no, it, later, no, no, it, Victor Wife with Simi is yeah. issue. I mean, Simi had to travel all the way to to Benin to practically say Josiah, Emma Yes. You know. Okay. So this is it. It has to be because when you're picking the person's content to use, you know that this is this content doesn't belong to, to me. You. It belongs to someone. Mm -hmm. You know the right thing to do. To the right thing to do is write the person. Ask seek for permission. permission. Mm -hmm. At times, you might actually get it for free. Right. I have a lot of people who have reached out to me to say, oh, they want to do a cover of Ebenezer. And I'm okay, you know what? What do you want to do? Let me see what you want to do. And they present it. Okay, no problem. Go. I, and I'm not even collecting a dime from it. Okay. Do the right thing. Do the right do thing the first. Right thing. So for most people, it's about doing the right thing. So, But if you take my content without my content, asking, con for, asking permission. for So it means you're 
taking me for you for know. a right. Uh, Kent Adujabi is going to sue you. <laughs> 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 Music producer, soundtrack composer, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank Your you. song thank has you given me. us great delight uh, in listening me. to it. it. It humbles you, it reminds you of what you should be doing at that moment. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that's what everybody does. So the moment they hear it, they just go into that moment yes. and then start to give thanks. Thank you so much, Kent Adujabi. And we do hope to have you here some other time when you become bigger <laughs> in yeah. five, ten years' time Amen. and when we can also call Amen. on you to probably uh, give us some lessons from your institute. <laughs> no problem. All right. I mean, for all of you who are out there thinking music is something you can do, as the, you've been doing it, you're frustrated. This is one of the reasons we bring people like Kent and DJB on the show so we can inspire you. I hope you are inspired. If you're a parent, music is what, yes, your child or children can do and make a living of it. Just prepare them for that life and they will be good to go. But don't forget the gut factor, Kent says, is always important. Thank you so much, everyone. We cannot <coughs> uh, say thank you enough for what you've done this week for us. And let's do this again next week, Monday. We'll be back with equally interesting topics. Uh, have a jolly good weekend. Uh, I am Romelia Isangmedu. Good morning. To everyone who's made this week a great success, thank you so much for all you do, especially to the camera men and women, and of course to the audio, everybody behind Vagon, so that uh, nobody will come and say that you did not mention my name. Thank you so much for all that you do. And of course to the producer for this week, Adisha Igop, thank you for all that you do. We'll see you again Monday morning, 9 a.m. Enjoy your weekend. And I dare say, if you need to go on the Lagos Ibadan Expressway, you need the God factor. <laughs> You need the wings. You need the God factor. You'll be flying in jazz wings. <laughs> <laughs>